Hello, sweet friends. Thank you so much for stopping by today. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. If you enjoy crafting and easy DIY projects, then please subscribe and tap the bell so you'll be notified as new projects are uploaded every week. Now today it is all about bows. I'm going to be showing you two different techniques for making these beautiful shabby rag bows. With this bow, I used an improvised bow maker that my husband put together for me just using some scrap wood that he had in the garage. And with this one, I'll show you how you can make this bow using nothing more than some blue painter's tape and a clothespin. So if you're ready to get started, join me in my craft room. Before I actually get into the meat of the instructions for the tutorial, there are just two quick things that I need to share with you. First of all, making consistently beautiful bows can be challenging, but I promise you, using these two techniques that I'm going to show you today, they are going to be easy, they are doable, and the more you practice, the better that you will become at making bows. Number two, your fabric that you use to make the tails for the rag bows have to be 100% cotton. No polyester, rayon, none of that. It has to be 100% cotton. And before you start cutting that fabric into the sections that you're going to use to make your rag tails, you have to test the fabric. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. When you have your cotton fabric, there are certain fabrics that you can cut from either side and they will tear and give you that beautiful, shabby, ragged edge that we're looking for. They'll just be beautiful. But there's other fabrics, because of the way that it is woven, it will only rip one way and it will not rip the other. So let me show you what I'm talking about. With this fabric, we have 100% cotton fabric here. Now, if I snip into the edge this way and tear it, look at that. Nothing barely happens. Nothing barely happens. So it shouldn't be that much effort to tear up your rag bow tails. So, if I snip it in the opposite direction, look at that. That's what we want, because ain't nobody got time to be trying to tug those tails apart if that fabric is going, the, the weave is going the wrong way. So, that's what we want. Now, let me show you in this. This is a um, drop cloth. And, oh, my dog hears me talking and she wants to see who I'm talking to. So, if I snip it this way, it tears beautifully. If I snip it this way, it tears beautifully as well. So, you can see with this 100% cotton drop cloth, it made no difference which way we cut it. It was going to tear beautifully either way. With this one, it did make a difference. So you need to test to make sure that before you start cutting sections to make your tails, test your fabric because sometimes it does make a difference depending on the weave of the fabric if you are going to be able to rip and get those beautiful shabby edges that we like in our rag bows. Now I am going to clean this up adjust the position of the camera to focus it more on the table so you can see what I'm doing. So let me get that cleaned up and I'll be right back. So to make a rag bow, of course, first you're gonna need some rags. And what I did, I just took pieces of cotton fabric and pieces of lace and literally just ripped it so it would form just a nice ragged edge on the sides. And I'm just gonna show you using some of this fabric here. 
how I did that. You can cut your strips as wide as you'd like for them to be. Some of these, like this is about an inch and a half wide, and then these are about half an inch wide. So I'm gonna make a few more of those, and literally all I did was take my fabric, snip it about a half inch in, and just ripped it. I'm gonna make just a few more of these. I didn't show when I cut out all of this. I thought I didn't wanna bore you to tears with cutting fabric. Almost as exciting as watching paint dry. And one more here. All right, if you want your rag bow to be longer or shorter, you can just adjust the length by however long you want your bow to be. Now that I have all of my strips assembled here, I'm just gonna start layering these and I wanna make sure that it's in the middle. This first piece, I'm going to lay this way because this is what I'm going to use to actually tie the tails. Then you just start layering your pieces in. Make sure that they're in the middle. I didn't want this to be too large because I'm going to be putting this on a book page wreath and I will link the tutorial for the book page link uh, wreath for you as well. I'm going to save this piece to actually tie off my bow part, the bow section of my rag bow. Okay, so now that I have all of that together there, I'm going to take this part, do a little, little bit of a tie right there, lift it up, I'm going to move this out of the way and just tie that puppy tight. And so you can see how that just really shake it out there, make it look a little more ratty. I love it. Okay. So that is the first part of our rag bow. Looks like a nice little tassel. I don't like those right there. They are a little too long. I'm gonna trim that off a little later. So that's the first part there. Now that I have the tails of the rag bow completed, I'm going to work on the bow portion. Now I could have used the same fabrics that I used here for the bow, the loops of the bow, but I decided I wanted to use a fabric wired ribbon. And I'm going to place this down here. Just gonna make it so much easier as I pull those out and put those loops in there. I'm also going to be using a little bit of lace and some of the fabric that I tore. This piece here is going to be what I use to tie the bow together and then tie it onto the tails. So I'll show you how that's done. Again, I'm just going to put this down and lay it across this way. So none of the loops are going to get in the way. Let me just take this here. So I want my loops, eh, I 
think four inches would be good. I'll make my loops about four inches. So let me get the first loop in there and just see how that's going to look. Yep, that's about four inches right there. Put that in there. Make sure that is about four inches. Yep. Because I want to keep the loops uniform in size. And once I get it all tied together, I'll have plenty of time to fluff. Just want to make sure that those are the same size. Here, I continue to take the ribbon from the spool to form my four inch loops. I give a little twist and pinch it in the middle as I place the ribbon between the dowel rods. This ribbon has the same pattern on both sides, but if you were using ribbon with a pattern on one side only, make sure it is facing up as you form your loops. Just repeat this process until you have three four inch loops on each side. So now you can see I have three loops, one, two, three, on that side and one, two, three on this side. So I have top, middle, and bottom. And once I remove it, you'll be able to see that a little better. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this off. Now, I'm going to use some of this lace and I'm just going to use two pieces of the lace. So lay that down, tails that way. Lay that across, tails this way. Make sure those are the same size. Yep, okay. All right, so those are the same size. And that's all I'm gonna do for this one. I could put multiple layers on here if I wanted to, but I did not want this to be too large. So now, once again, I'm just going to Gently tie that down, and as I'm lifting, I'm tying and pulling that, and then I'm just gonna pull it really, really tight like that. And so that is what the bow portion looks like. Now I'm going to take the tails that I used to tie this together and I'm going to tie that portion to the tails here. So I'm going to just lay that down. Really, really pull that puppy and just tie it as tight as you can. Okay, and then that is the looped part tied to the tails of the rag bow. Now, I am going to take my button here and I will just be hot gluing that onto the middle. I may have to cut that shank off. I don't think that's going to glue down. Got my snippers and I'm going to hold them down in case that thing flies when I cut it. Whoop, there it goes. And you can see I just snipped the button shank off. It was standing up too high 
yeah, now that's going to lay flush. See, it just, I just cut it off because this is plastic. And I'm going to throw that away so my dog doesn't eat it. Because she would. I'm going to get my finger protectors on. Put some glue in the middle here. And then I'm just going to hold that until it sets. Give it a little tug. I still have the tails that I used to tie it on that you could use to tie it on greenery if you wanted to. But I'm going to be, again, putting this on the book page wreath. And so I'm not really going to be able to tie that on. And I'll show you when I go to attach it how I'm going to put that on the book page wreath. All right, friends, now we're going to make a rag bow without the little improvised bow maker that I have to show you how to just lay it out on your craft table and to make it that way. So I have two pieces of fabric and they are both 100% cotton. And then I have five pieces of lace. These are 20 inches long and eight inches wide. And again, let me get this out of the way. I am just going to take and snip in about um, not quite a half inch and just rip. And we're gonna do that all the way down our piece of fabric here. I also have blue painter's tape on the table and I'll show you why I've got that there in just a minute. So we're just gonna snip it and rip it. Snip it and rip it. I love the old snip and rip. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with this gingham cotton fabric. Isn't it adorable? I just love it. So cute. And you are gonna have thread everywhere. It's an easy cleanup. But if you do have animals, I suggest that you not let them in your craft room when you're doing this so they won't eat any of that thread. It looks like I'm gonna be able to get three out of that. Okay, so now that we've got our fabric for our tails, I do take a minute and just kind of pull off some of that excess thread because it really is everywhere. It is everywhere. Definitely going to need to vacuum after you do this one. Okay, and that all our excess string. Look at that. Woo, that's a lot. So now that we have our strips of fabric all snipped and ripped, and we have our laces here. Now the reason that I have these pieces of blue painter's tape is when I'm laying it down, I make sure that they're all laid the same length. So I don't have one laid out this way and then these tails are over here so it keeps everything uniform and in the middle. All right, so then I just take two different pieces and I'm gonna set them off. One is going to be the tie off for the bow portion so I'm gonna just put that to the side and then the other piece I will lay in the middle here. 
and I am going to measure that again just to make sure that that is in the middle. And it has just started raining here. Okay, that is not in the middle. Let me move that over. That is the middle. And then I want, once I have that and I know that that is in the middle, then I tape that down as well. So nothing is going anywhere. Now, you're just gonna take your pieces of your fabric and your lace, and you're just gonna start laying them all across. I love making these bows. They're just so much fun, and they're just so beautiful. And I, of course, love the shabby look. And we're just going to keep layering it up. So everything is even. I'm just going to move this up just a little bit. It's still on that there. I'm going to remove the tape that I have here. It up. Look how adorable. Aren't these just so cute? I'm going to set this off to the side and now we will make the looped bow portion of our bow. You will need a clothespin because that's going to help hold all of that looped ribbon together. Okay, and I saved two other pieces of lace for that. And then I have my wired ribbon. And I have my piece here that I'm going to be tying the loops off with. So I won't need that just yet, so I will set that off to the side clean up my workspace here, and you will need either a tape measure or a ruler to keep your loops uniform size. So, I'm just going to pull some off here, and you see why the bow maker makes it so much easier because you got stuff all over the table when you don't have the bow maker just keeping everything in one spot for you. Okay, so I am going to make my loop here. I'm going to come in and pinch it at four inches. And just pinch. And leave a little bit of the tail. You can cut that off later. Okay, give it a little twist. And then bring that into the middle. That's four inches, a little long, make it a little bit shorter so it's even. Then I'm going to fold it in half just to make sure that those are the same size. Okay. Give another little twist. So these are going to be the ones that you have at the bottom. Now we're going to go and pull this out to make the middle loop because we want a loop at the top, a loop at the middle, and a loop at the bottom. So this will be our middle loop. And you're just going to put your finger into the first loop and your second loop just to make sure that they are the same length. And they are, so I'm going to pinch that, give a little twist, and then come out here on this side. Make that the same size. It is. Give a little twist. 
So you can see so far we've got our four loops. We got two at the bottom and two in the middle. Now we're going to come up and have our loops up at the top. And again, you want to put your fingers in there and then just make sure that they are all the same size. Hold it in the middle. You give a little twist. Pull off some more ribbon here. Give myself some more room. Okay, let's see if these are all the same size. Okay, put that in the middle. Give a little twist. Don't cut this off just yet because if you've made a mistake and you need to go back and make a loop longer or shorter, you want to make sure that you have the ability to do that. And you can't do it if you cut it off too short. Now you're going to take your clothespin and you're just going to pin that in the middle. So right now you've got your three loops on either side. And now we're going to take one piece of our lace, fold it in half, and lay it over to where it is the same length as your loop. Remove your clothespin and then put it on top of that. So it holds everything together. Then you're going to do the same thing with your other piece of lace. You're going to fold that in half. And I've made it to where it's got a straight top and scallops at the bottom. I've made it to where the straight top is at the top and the scallops are at the bottom. So make sure that it is the same length as your loops. Take that off and then put all of that back in there. So we've got all of this being held by our clothespin. Now I'm going to fold it in half just to make sure everything is the same length. It looks good. Now I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm going to take this, I see where my middle is right here. I'm going to move this clothespin to the side just a little bit so it can still hold everything together. And now I'm going to tie it off with this pretty checked fabric. So good, so pretty. Now we can remove our clothespin and this is what we have right now. It's looking a little ratty because I still need to take and fluff and you see once you start fluffing this it just looks so much better. So when you first make the bow, if you're disappointed in how it looks, just keep fluffing it. It will look better as you get all that fluffed up. Now this right here, because it is um, just thin, that's not going to hold up like your wired ribbon would. So if you don't want that, you can take some hot glue and just glue the back portion of that loop down there so it will have some stability. I'm going to now take this part and tie it to our tails. And then I can do some more fluffing. And I'm gonna lay this down so I can tie it better. Lay that down and tie it all up. And you can see 
That is how you make your rag bow without having the bow maker. Still simple and still really, really cute. And that's how it's done. I'm going to be gluing, I don't know, can you even see that? Just a black button. I'm gonna be gluing the button to the middle. And you don't have to embellish the middle if you don't want to, but I like it. I just think it looks really, really cute. And I am going to be brave and not put on my finger protectors. And I hope I don't regret it. All right, so put a little bit of glue there in the middle and hold until it sets. And guess what I just did? I just burned my thumb. <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, I'm not gonna squeeze out any glue, but I am going to take, there's always glue on the end of the nozzle here, and I'm just gonna rub that on the back of this lace and push it down on both sides. Just rub the excess and push it down. That way, that lace is going to stay upright because before it was flopping and now you can see that the lace is just gonna stay upright. And that looks so cute with that little button in the middle as well. Now, you can tie this on if you'd like uh, to a wreath. I've got one here and I'm just gonna see what it looks like. So, I have the fabric here from where I tied the loops together and now I'm just gonna tie it onto my wreath. You can see it looks adorable. That looks good. Now let me show you how I put the other bow onto the book page wreath. I just took some ribbon and strung it all the way around and tied it up at the top and put a Christmas ornament hanger in there. Then I took an extra large safety pin and just pinned this bow onto this section of ribbon. That way I didn't have to glue anything. So that is how you attach it to a book page wreath relatively simply. Bows are beautiful on wreaths, but they can be used to embellish so many other things as well. It's absolutely adorable attached to this straw hat, and it really kicks it up a notch on this plain canvas tote bag. It adds a perfect farmhouse touch to this pillow and jazzes up a plain lampshade. My favorite though is the bow tied onto a handcrafted wood lantern. Now that you are a bow pro, tell me in the comments, how are you going to use yours? Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Please remember to subscribe and share with others who enjoy shabby chic crafts like this one. Come back next week for a thrifted treasure makeover that's perfect for spring. And until then, my friends, be blessed.